Hello everybody, welcome to the Redmen TV. My name is Ben Kelly, this is the Liverpool Development Watch and my job is to bring you updates on the loanees and new sides associated with Liverpool Football Club. Now I will apologise in advance, I've got a bit of a sore throat this week so if my voice isn't quite the same as it usually is, then I do apologise. But we'll get straight into it and we'll get straight into the loanees as we usually do. There was lots of playing time this week for all the loanees, only two men didn't start, one of which was Ben Woodburn who unfortunately really isn't getting the playing time at Sheffield United that we were hoping he would get. But the man who grabbed the headlines this week was, of course, the man in the title, Harry Wilson at Derby, with his insane free kick away at Man United in the League Cup on Tuesday. What a goal that was. It was really funny because I was sat with my flatmate at the time watching the game, it was just us two, and um, he's a Wigan fan, and he's a bit sceptical about Harry Wilson because I kind of bang on about him all the time when I'm at home. And yeah, when Wilson was standing over that free kick, he turned to me and he said, jokingly, if he's got anything about him, this Harry Wilson kid, he'll put this top bins. And I went, just watch. And he did it, and I celebrated, and it was so so satisfying because it was such a good goal and then he obviously scored his penalty in the shootout as well really calm cool and collected penalty and my fingers crossed that he wasn't going to miss it you know and, and put put Derby under some pressure in the shootout and they had really held the nerve and got through the cup tie there really congratulations to them and Frank Lampard and Harry Wilson what a week that will have been they unfortunately low lost at the weekend to Bolton away at the University of Bolton Stadium I believe it's now called it was either the Reebok or the Macron or whatever you want to call it these days um, Wilson was less effective. Derby had a lot of the ball. They dominated the game in terms of the possession stats, but they struggled to bait a resilient Bolton down. And to be honest, they did deserve to lose. So a mixed week overall, but obviously the headlines were taken by Wilson's free kick at Old Trafford on Tuesday. What a goal that was. Elsewhere in Europe, Alan Rodriguez finally made a start for Eintracht Frankfurt. Of course, this guy has been with the club for years now, but he's been getting loaned out in order to attain a work permit. If he gets a suitable amount of time on the pitch this season, this will be the last season that he will need to go out on loan in order to go contribute towards that work permit. So like I say, this is his first start. Hopefully it's the first of many because if he does, he'll be qualified to play for us in England next season. You know, he's, he's a very good player. He played an advanced role of a dominant midfield three. Frank Work won 4-1 comfortably. Yeah, a really promising start to his Frankfurt career out in the Bundesliga. Also in the Bundesliga, of course, I'm a little late on the scene with this news, but it's obviously well known by now that Marco Gruitsch suffered quite a long-term serious ankle injury in their game versus Borussia Mönchengladbach last weekend. He's taken off with an ankle problem and depending on damage to the ankle ligaments, he may be facing at least six weeks out of action. Hopefully he comes back there because he made quite a promising start there. He's getting quite a lot of game time, you know, and hopefully that um, he'll be recovering, you know, perhaps a bit, maybe a bit ahead of schedule. Hopefully it's not as bad as they're fearing. He'll slowly begin to reintegrate into training and stuff. But yeah, really, really tough news for, for Marco Gruch to take there, given the good start that he's had. And Loris Karius is playing in Turkey with Besiktas, of course, in Istanbul. He continued his good start to life out there with two great performances this week. The first coming in the local derby versus Fenerbahce on Monday, which was a one-all draw. While on Saturday, he kept his first clean sheet for the club in a 2-0 win versus K. Serispor. There's still an abundance of playing time for Ryan Kent and Ovi Ajaria for the Rangers side up in Scotland. Stephen Gerrard's side got through to the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup in the week, but suffered a shot loss to Livingston on Sunday, leaving them sixth in the Scottish Premiership. Elsewhere in Scotland, Alan Bogdan is in great form for Hibs, keeping back-to-back -back clean sheets this week to make it three in a row for them. He couldn't quite do enough, though, to keep them in the Scottish Cup, where they lost 6-5 in a penalty shootout. They're above Rangers now in the Scottish Premiership and really pushing. They're in some really good form. Celtic still lagging behind a little bit. They might be able to start pushing for a title challenge this season. It's early days, but let's see. Herbie Kane is still flying high for Doncaster back in England now, making his 12th start of the season on Saturday versus Plymouth, where they won three goals to two. And finally, Tywin Iwaniji out in Belgium has rediscovered his scoring form, scoring twice this week for Ghent in a 4-2 cut win versus Vuitton. And with that, we will move on to the youth sides. In a week infested with Liverpool versus Chelsea games, Liverpool under 23s had a much better week this week as they beat Chelsea under 23s 3-1 away from home on Saturday afternoon. Matty Virtue scored twice for Neil Critchley's side as they controlled the majority of the first half. Chelsea had a lot of chance in the second half but couldn't take them and ultimately take anything from the game. It was great to see, by the way, as a side note, Curtis Jones and Camilo Grabara making the bench for the first team in the game on Wednesday against the Chelsea first team, of course, in the Carabao Cup. What a goal, by the way, from Ian Hazard. Yeah, unbelievable, you know, obviously against us. It's a really difficult one to take, but he's one of them players I just love watching him play. I just wanted to put that 
starting the show today because I just think it's absolutely outstanding what a goal that was. The under-18s beat Stoke City. Yeah, remember Stoke City? 4-2 <laughs> away from home in the first Premier League Cup fixture of the season, meaning they go top of the group. That was also on Saturday. Those guys are scoring loads of goals at the moment. And the informed Bobby Duncan got another two to add to his tie this season. He is looking so good. In fact, I won't be surprised if come January time, maybe a couple of the under-23s players go out on loan. He and Paul Glatzel might be looking at a step up to the under-23s, much like Curtis Jones and some other of the other 18 did last season. And even looking further ahead than that, look at Curtis Jones now is beginning to knock on the door of the first team as I mentioned earlier in the show and that is it this week for the Development Watch ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching as always my name has been Ben Kelly follow me on Twitter at bkelly776 and do all the usual stuff that I normally ask you to do whether you do it or not I don't know but like I say subscribe to the channel like the video leave me a comment down below about your thoughts on the show and I'll see you next week for more Development Watch goodness goodbye <laughs>